The closer we come to a point called finality, the simpler your walk needs to become. When I was young in ministry, I would read the book of Revelation and I would focus my attention upon the vials and the beast and the dragon and the harlot church and the trumpets and the, the rocks falling and the chief men and the mighty men crying and speaking. But when you really understand the purpose of revelation, not just the book, but the essence of an unfolding of God's mind, You'll understand what John saw in chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. John said, a door was opened. And John said, I beheld a throne. And one sitting upon the throne. As we come to the place called finality, we must become throne conscious. Everything emanates from the throne, lightnings and voices and thunderings proceed from the throne. And what is before the throne? The seven spirits of God and he that sitteth upon the throne and around the throne, the four and twenty elders. And then there were perpetual worshipers. The King James called them the, the four living creatures. The Bible says that that they didn't cease in terms of worship day nor night that their voice stopped echoing the essence of his presence they described the very fabric of god's existence they simply said holy 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 now had that been some of us we would have gotten tired we would began to watch the walk watching the clock our feet would have begun to hurt but these four living creatures they understood for for this cause have we been created that is to worship him yeah. brothers and sisters I would like to suggest according to the text that you become throne conscience he that sits upon the throne and what comes out of the throne and what's around the throne forget about the beast and the dragon it doesn't matter whether we go in the middle of the week or or after the week or whether we go mid trip post it doesn't matter as long as we go but when you become a worshiper then you rest in the wisdom of God let's just lift our hands and worship him now let's worship him now let's worship him now we worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your holy name. Come on out of your spirit. Let's, let's worship. We worship your name. Worship. worship. Glory, glory, glory. We worship your holy name. I want to speak today from the subject, the revelation of the hidden remnant. The revelation of the hidden remnant. I think that as we are crossing the threshold and as there's a shift that's going from one move to the next move, there's some vestiges of the old and the new. And the mandate is that there be a burning off of everything that conflicts with what God is doing in the nowness of now. God is causing the hair of the church to roll back. You and I understand that we've gone through some very perilous times in terms of the 
of the kingdom of God in terms of disparity and embarrassment and uh, men of renown being uncovered and revealed for their lasciviousness and their pernicious lifestyles. The question might be asked, well, what happened to the church? How did we find ourselves in such a deplorable condition in terms of spiritual impotency? Number one, I would like to suggest that the church has been swimming in the wrong river. <laughs> Whenever the river of God, the streams of God are flowing, you don't have to do anything to cause the move of God to move. When God is moving, the only thing we have to do is just get in the river. And the river precipitates miracles, signs, and wonders. And the movement of the intentional counsel of God. Number one, when Naaman's case was diagnosed to be acute and deadly, the wisdom that God gave to the prophet that was that Naaman would go and dip in the Jordan River. Naaman being the humanist that he was, he began to suggest and reason out of his own reasoning factors. He said, now, ought not there hometown rivers of Abana and Farfa more purer and cleaner than the, the muddy Jordan River? It's dangerous to reason out the wisdom of God anytime you walk in human reasoning. You have to, out of your own reasoning faculties, support the move that you've begun. Farfa means man-made. We've been swimming uh, as apostolics in man-made rivers. Some are reading the word out of the Hebrew and out of the Greek. But I would like to suggest that we read the Bible out of revelatory understanding. Anytime you swim in man-made lakes and streams, it is you that comes up short. Then Abana means human sufficiency. We've been swimming in streams of human sufficiency. We were sufficient in our own economic powers. We were sufficient in our abilities to build large buildings. But we only heal the hurt of the daughters of Jerusalem slightly. There was a slight prophetic word. There was a slight understanding of the five-fold governmental structure of the New Testament church. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says that God is in a posture of restoration. God is now restoring all things that the, the canker worm and the, the locust and the caterpillar yeah. has stolen out of the kingdom of God. And when God is in a mode of restoration, either you allow God to restore or you allow the anointing of restoration to destroy you. It's interesting, uh, 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 Dr. Locke, that we call ourselves apostolics, but we deny the office of the apostle uh, to operate in the kingdom. Uh, uh, it's like trying to take three fingers of a hand and heal the sick. It's like trying to take three fingers of a hand and pick up a piece of bread. You see, we need the apostle and the prophet. The Bible teaches us that the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, being the chief cornerstone. Now, my brothers and sisters, the controversy comes when we do not understand, amen, the apostolic office and the apostolic uh, authority of that office. Now, I am the first to acknowledge that when there are some that are saying, do I have time to preach today? There are some that are saying that they are apostles or apostolic fathers and they are found to be liars. Number one, we must consider that Jesus Christ himself was in a category all 
in and of himself he was not only a man was he the is he the high priest but the Bible says consider him the apostle and high priest over your confession Jesus was God's set one to the earth now the word apostle comes from the Greek word apostolos which simply means a set one a pathfinder a trailblazer we are afraid of that word in the apostolic church it is not a spiritual term it is a military socio-political term just as ecclesia is not a spiritual term it is a socio-political term it is Roman in context and Greek in text whenever Caesar would send his ecclesia out to establish his kingdom in the known earth then he would set his trailblazers or his apostolos or his apostles to establish order and form in the kingdom of Caesar so Jesus was God's apostle that was sent to the earth with the message of reconciliation now he is in a category all by himself then the second category of apostles it is the twin apostles of the Lamb that's where the controversy comes in oh yes yes there will never be any more uh, apostles of the Lamb but then there are about 19 to 21 mentions of apostles in the New Testament not only do you have the 12 uh, but then lots were cast uh, and Matthias was called an apostle and then we find in Acts number 13 we find that certain prophets and teachers at the first church of Antioch as they ministered unto the Holy Spirit and they fasted God gave a prophetic word and the prophet stood up and said separate unto me Barnabas and Apostle and Paul for the work that I have called him now Acts chapter 13 does not show the work that God called them but God said just separate them and send them now in Acts 14 we find that Saul and Barnabas were called apostles now you have the 12 Judas hanged himself then you have Matthias that's 13 then you have Barnabas and Paul that's 14 and 15 oh come on here somebody then you have James the brother of Jesus uh, that's 16 uh, then you have Jude the brother of Jesus uh, that's 17 uh, come on somebody my brothers and my sisters uh, the Bible says in the book of Acts that when Judas hang himself Paul quotes Luke rather quotes the Psalms uh, and he says let his habitation be desolate but allow his office and his bishopric be given to another if this man dies you're gonna get another person pastor if I die you'll get another leader but when the apostles died we don't want any more of them it's no wonder that we're in the shape that we're in for the special miracles must come by the hands of the apostles come on here somebody shout at it in this house hallelujah to the Lamb of God we have a dysfunctional church we have a dysfunctional hand you see you need the apostle to govern you need the prophet to guide you need the evangelist to gather you need the shepherd a man to teach a man the shepherd to God and you need the teacher to ground but the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon each gift in the offering brothers and sisters Romans chapter 12 tells us something very interesting Paul says now though we have many members in the body all members do not have the same office now Paul deals here theologically with number one offices and then he deals with gifts and then he gives with ministries he says though we have a many membered body all members don't have the same office now what do you mean the same office Office. that's where we get the word officer the officers in the body of the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the teachers and the, and the
and the shepherd. They are office bearers. They are the governmental authority over the body of Christ. But then he shifts from office to gifts. Now that's where we have simple gifts. The simple gift of prophecy and the simple gift of laying on of hands and and those giftings of the Holy Spirit. Now everybody that has a gift of the Spirit does not operate in the office of government. That's where we get in trouble. A few people stand up and prophesy, yay, yay, yay. He come on a Honda. And so they call themselves a prophet. Oh, help me preach up in the Holy Ghost. But you have to understand you have a simple gift, but you are not in the office. But then he says, now on ministry, let's wait or let us give attention unto our ministry. So you have offices uh, and you have gifts and then you have a ministry that must be waited upon. And so God is restoring offices back to the house. He's restoring gifts back to the house and he's restoring ministries back to the house. We will never be what God wants us to be until we allow God to restore that which he wants to restore. Everybody get up and change seats. That's what God is doing in the kingdom. God is arranging and rearranging. God is bringing into order that which is out of order. Ladies and gentlemen, we must see today that, 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 but when God says, I want you to go in the Jordan River, not a banner, man made, not father, human sufficiency. If you want what I've got, you've got to go to the Jordan River. Jordan means death. You've got to die to your man-made traditions. You've got to die, amen, come on somebody, to all of the junk that the fathers taught that was not biblically sound. You've got to die to your isms and your schisms and what my papa and what my bishop and what my pastor said, if you're going to go in this next move, you've got to go to the Jordan and die. Hallelujah to the Lamb. My brothers and my sisters, we have to understand that there, that there are many men that are, and women that are in the hinder part of the kingdom that God is nurturing, nurturing and mentoring to raise them up. But if we're going to be what God desires us to be, two things are essential and necessary. In Ecclesiastes chapter number 8, the Bible says, and the the wise heart will know the proper time and the procedure. Timing and the procedure is essential to being in the Omega anointing. Uh, you see, the essentialities of time and procedures are necessary mandates from the Father's mind. Procedure can be defined as a manner of acting or a manner of proceeding in any course of action. It is the methodology. It is the form. It is the conditioning of the conducting of business. There must be a change in the paradigm. The old model will not work in the new move. Number, number one. Number, ha, 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 ha. Now time is the moment or the period in which something takes place. In the fullness of time, God sent Yahshua. The fullness of the times of the Gentiles. You see, time must get full. Time must get pregnant. And when time gets full, our time gets pregnant. She gets pregnant with days. It gets pregnant with purpose. Time gets pregnant with seasons and events. And so when we allow the fullness of time to come in our ministries, some of us are discouraged here today because we've looked at other ministries and, and other preachers uh, and you were saying to yourself oh God uh, why have I not exploded uh, why 
why don't I have a mega ministry? Why are you not using me the way you're using them? It's not your time yet. God has a time for you. You, brothers and sisters of apostolicity, you are part of the hidden remnant. Hallelujah to God. But while you're waiting on the back side of the desert, you need to learn how to worship. You see, to come out of the backside, to come back into Egypt and operate in the fivefold, hundredfold authority, you've got to be a worshiper. You know, Dr. Wagner, you've observed this. You won't say it, but I'll say it. I go to many churches and worship is going on, but pastors are back in the, in the office watching the football game. They said, Doc, we're not going out yet, Doc. Nothing going on but the but a few folk praying. I want to be where the few folk are because it's worship and it's prayer that brings the king in the house. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah to God. Uh, uh, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, so you must understand that, that you are one of a million of God's hidden ones. Uh, Moses uh, was hidden in, an, in a basket on ark for three months. Uh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Uh, the word Moses uh, literally means drawn from the water. God has you in the water of trouble. Uh, God has you in the water of issues. And, uh, God has you in the waters of confusion. Uh, amen. You're in the midst of two moves. Uh, the old move uh, don't understand you and the new move won't receive you. But there's a shifting going on. Uh, but God's going to burn off the old. Uh, and the new is got to Marusha. The new is going to receive you. Somebody jump up and give him a, a crazy praise up in this house. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And so Moses was hid in a basket. But then God brings him out of the hiddenness of the water. And God places him and gives him a full scholarship in the University of Pharaoh. He learned the culture. He learned the language. He learned how to go in and out. But then God says, now you did the 30-fold in the water. You did the 60-fold in the palace of Pharaoh. Now the hundredfold anointing. Some of y'all are frustrated because the anointing in the 80s is not working in the 90s. You see, David had the first anointing, but he got the first anointing on credit. He didn't have to do anything to kill the bear, to kill the lion. He didn't have to do anything to kill the giant. That was the first anointing. But that second anointing, he had to dodge spears and uh, deal with a psychotic name Saul uh, a love hate relationship uh, if you're going to get the second and the third anointing uh, you've got to deal with psychotic people uh, psychotic leaders uh, psychotic bishops uh, psychotic pastors uh, hi, 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 hi. psychotic nature but if you want the glory and the anointing uh, you've got to tell God whatever it takes uh, I gotta have it I will have it I gotta have it. I, I'm not satisfied. Somebody go ta 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 ta. Oh, somebody, somebody bless him up in here. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and so God, uh, God graduates. Moshe out of the second phase of his ministry. You understand that there are phases in your ministry. Many are called but few are chosen. Most people die and don't even get in the first phase of ministry. Talk to me somebody. The Bible said that God had anointed Moses and given him a vision of being a deliverer from the Egyptian bondage. Now Moses had the vision but, but the timing and the procedure was wrong. You can have vision but your time is off and your procedure is wrong. Moses tried to deliver a brother with the bareness of his physical strength. God says wrong procedure and wrong time. The vision is shooting but your procedure is off. God says I've got to send you on 
the back side of the desert. I've got to allow you to go through the blazing, sweltering heat of the wilderness where you can't see, where there's no road map. You see, Moses was an apostle. He was a port man. He was a trailblazer. Trailblazers go where nobody's ever gone before. Come on here, somebody. I am a trailblazer. They won't tell you, but there are apostles in the house. They won't tell you, but there are apostles in your church. That's why you're frustrated. You're trying to pastor. You're trying to be an evangelist. You're the thumb and you're trying to fit on the finger. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. I cannot sit down, please let me preach. Ah, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says that Moses goes into the third phase of his ministry on the back side of the desert. Ah, there, there are no Gucci bags and there were no armor bearers. There was no ringing of the bell and servants came. Amen. To, to assuage his sweat or to pamper for him. Moses is out there with Jethro's sheep. Moses smelled like sheep dung. Moses was out there. Nothing but bad, bad. Moo, moo. He had the heat 40 years on the back side of the desert. Moses began to question did God call me? Moses began to question did I see what I thought I saw? Moses began to question did I hear him? Forty years ago, tell me to deliver the folk. Uh, the devil talked to him. Look at you. Where are you now? What are you doing? Look at you. You left the palace. You made a mistake. If you hadn't bothered that Egyptian, you would still be Pharaoh's boy. But when Moses' spirit was broken, uh, when the rage and the anger of his passion was subdued, uh, his neck was like a leather piece of girdle. Uh, his face was beaten by the, the eastern sun, his brow. Then all of a sudden, when it's all over in the mind, of Moses. God says you passed the test. It's time for the third anointing. It's time to leave the backside and go back to where I told you 40 years ago. My brothers and sisters, it ain't over yet apostolics. The first shall be last, but the last shall be first. It ain't over yet. I know the healing revival of Jack Cole and Catherine Kuhlman and A.A.L. and they had their day. I know the word of faith movement uh, of the Kenneth Hagans and the Copelands. Uh, they had their hour. Uh, come on somebody. Uh, but they are prophets in the land now. Uh, and they are sounding the alarm. Uh, and they are calling for the apostles uh, to come forth uh, and bring government back to the house. Uh, come forth uh, and bring clarity back to the word. Uh, come forth uh, and bring order back to the house. Uh, come on and shout the air. Come on and shout, yeah. The apostles are coming. The apostles, they are coming. They're on the backside. But the prophets are calling them forth. Shout, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me praise him in here. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes. Our day is ahead of us. We've crossed over into it. If you stop now, you stop too soon. If you give up now, you give up too soon. You pay the price for it. Amen. You suffered. In the 70s, they looked over you. In the 80s, they talked about you. They didn't understand you. But don't get weary now. God is saying, I'm going to reveal that which has been hidden. I'm going to disclose that which has been shrouded. You see, the problem has been, the Bible said that Jacob, or Jacob, awakened out of his sleep. And he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. You see, we got too many sleeping leaders. Help me, Holy Ghost. You know what, Dr. Wagner? I know you're the man for the hour. I know 
that God has given you to the Pentecostal assemblies of the world as their redeemer. But what you've got to watch is the sleeping leaders. God is in the house and they don't even know it. Shout yes! Hallelujah! 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 Oh, somebody! But you know what? When you stop being intimidated and afraid of the faces of men and rise up in the authority of your office, God will back you up. Come on, somebody! Hallelujah! 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 a lot for years and she would always say I'm Evangelist Locke but I remember in Milwaukee Wisconsin when Evangelist Mildred Boyd prophesied to her and said that you're going to be an Esther to the people you see Esther wasn't no evangelist Esther was a prophetess and you know what your prophetic gift has, hasn't fully expressed itself because you haven't really named yourself what God named you but when you start calling yourself prophetess I own a lot then the fullness of your gift that's in you, the office that you stand in, it'll fire to go forth. Hallelujah! 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 Get your name off the baby. Let the daddy name the baby. Come on, somebody. Come on, pastors. We can't name the baby. God's got to name the baby. The organization can't name the baby. The father has got to name the baby. God said, separate my apostles unto me for the work I've called them to do. We're playing games. We're playing marbles with diamonds. Can I show you how backward we are? We don't mind for calling us reverend. That offends God, it doesn't offend us because it causes us to fit in real good. And every woman that gets licensed with most Pentecostal organizations is automatically evangelist. Not so. So that's the mama named the baby. The God, God, God said, I got to name this last baby. You said, well, Bishop, what does it matter with a title? It matters everything. Come on, somebody. If I buy a Mercedes and spend $100,000, I don't want to get tricked and call it no VW. If I buy a Rolls Royce, I don't want you to say that's a pretty Honda. Come on here, somebody. Ah, if I've got a house on Silk Stock and Boulevard, don't tell me I live in the ghetto. If I am a prophet, call me prophet. If I am an apostle, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me be what God told me I am. Tell somebody to loose my ministry. Tell them loose my office. Tell them loose my gifting. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel I, the chief of Apostle in me now. Hallelujah. Ha, yeah, 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 yeah. Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, we must understand. Ha, 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 ha. Glory, glory.
Can you imagine how uncomfortable it is to try to make this thumb fit in the middle? It's uncomfortable. Trying to make this index finger because it wants to get along with you and carry your licenses, make it fit here. But God is saying there's a remnant that I'm calling. Prophets, apostles, there'll be churches he'll close down. There'll be pastors that he'll set forth in their rightful office as evangelists. There'll be those who are trying to pastor who are nothing but in the ministry of helps. He's going to shut you down and put you in position. And when you get in position, that will be a promotion. Come on, somebody. But when God's, come on now. When God, you, you see, there's no revival in your place. There's no revival that God's not there. The birds stop bringing water. The brooks stop producing water. You in a dried up creek and you build a shrine and a monument and put a name on it. But God's not there. God's saying, go to Zarephath. I've got a place called there. I've got a woman called a widow. Come on, somebody. And there's a miracle you need to work for the woman. But because of your arrogance and your pride and your religious denomination and your traditions, amen, God is sending you to the woman to work a miracle for the woman and you had a bride. Ride up brook. Go to Sarafat and let God use you. When I was young evangelist, I used to cry, Dr. Locke, not literally cry, but you know how we cry in our spirit. You know why? I see these guys ministering all these big churches and, and God sending me down to Missionary Smith's church with two members and two of them in the old folk home. Huh? You know, all that kind of stuff. But you see, God knew me before I was in my mama's womb. And where God has placed you, I mean, your region is the earth. That's your region. Amen, amen. Uh, all 18 latitudes, God's sending you there. And brother, I know you've been going forth in the fire, but there's a fresh fire coming on you even now. A new anointing coming on you even now. Brother, you remember this time and you remember this day for the freshness of the oil and the fire of God will come upon you. And man, when you step over into Y2K, amen, God's going to say, you okay? And devil's going to say, oh me, oh me, oh me. Because the fire, yeah, you walked in in the measure 30, 60, but now the hundredfold too that's coming on oh. hallelujah 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 huh? God is calling for the measurement of the temple. The Bible says in, in Revelation 11, rise and measure the temple of God. Measure, see how holy it is. How much worship is there? How much is tradition and how much is the word? How much is imitation and, and how much is revelation? How much is man made and mama made and mammy made and how much is made by the word of God? God is calling every pastor to go home and measure the temple. Measure the leadership in the house. Measure your deacons. Measure your officials. Are they with your vision? Are they with your program? Are they in prayer meeting? Are they anointed? Are they wise in some measure measure because the glory is coming back to the house hallelujah hallelujah and so your office where God has had you the last 15 20 years this end time apostolic remnant that have been privileged to carry the awareness of the wisdom of the oneness of the great God Jehovah God has allowed you to be hidden from the atalayas of this world he's allowed the atalaya is an anointing killer 
amen she hates the seed royal that's why they never liked Bishop Wagner when I first got saved in 1974 he was Elder Wagner and they didn't like him then it was the Atalias that didn't like him it really wasn't you my brother it was the spirit of Atalaya that hated the, uh, he knew he saw that apostolic seed in you uh, he saw the mantle of the apostle let me tell you something Jesus had the mantle but when he died he cut it up in five pieces he gave the apostle a piece gave the prophet a piece gave the pastor a piece gave the evangelist a piece and gave the teacher a piece and so the devil saw the seed of, of the apostle the uh, mantle of the apostle upon you that's why they lied on you talked about you had you in places you didn't go had you with folk you didn't even know come on somebody it was the anointing killer of Athaliah but God hid you in the house for this season and so now Bishop Wagner God is dethroning the old and coronating the new God is changing the seasons and changing the times oh you know what you've been through but rejoice it's your hour now rejoice it's your day ah. worship your name worship your name hey Ohio boy worship your name come on worship worship kiss for bow before bow worship out of your spirit ah. hey. worship your name we worship your We worship your holy name. Worship your name. Worship your name. We worship your Your name, worship your 